Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Thank you for joining me today. And if you've been following along, you will have seen me make my Indian summer journal during July 2022. Uh, it's now complete and you can see how I made this, how I put it together and all the pages and all the prompts and everything in the playlist as listed uh, below with the Indian summer journal junk journal July 2022 that's in the playlist so the link will be here for that as well at the end of the video so my Indian summer journal did not take me to India it took me to Liverpool in England and it also it took me back in time to the 1930s and the 1960s so this is um, how journaling goes and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm going to take you along for a ride on my next journal which I'm sure will take us through time and space once more. So if you'd like to journal along with me, I haven't already make, made the journal, I want to make it and I'd like you to see the process and you can journal along if you would like. So we're not going to be doing everyday prompts like before but I thought we could catch up on a weekly basis to fill the journal. We're not going to be adding lots and lots of pages. It is just really designed for a couple of months. When I sat down and thought, what do I want my journal to look like? I've been thinking I'd like a slightly bigger than the one that I had before. I thoroughly enjoyed having a slightly smaller size, but this here, this shape here is uh, seven inches, seven inches across by eight and a quarter. So for anyone in the UK this is an A4 piece of paper so we're leaving the width as it is but I wanted to reduce the length and that means not having it in half but having a much bigger uh, sheet of paper which means cutting it in half and having extra scraps and the whole thing you'll be thinking well what a waste of paper. Uh -uh. No no you need to follow on with this and you need to get yourself a stack of 17 pieces of paper if you're going to copy what I am doing here. These pieces of paper are from my office and they have been dropped on the floor and scuffed up. I can't use them as letters for professional reasons that just, you know, isn't going to do it. So that's perfect for me and junk journaling. And so I've got 17 sheets of paper here and the rest of the pages I'm going to make up with other ephemera and other pages from other things. So you just need 17 sheets of paper and you need to cut them down with a ruler. It all needs to be rough. We are just going to tear down these sheets. So we're aiming for seven inches across. Let's just measure twice, double check. Seven inches. Got a lot of things on the desk today. Right, we don't want it to scoot about. Okay, so my Indian summer journal was made up of a soft cover, cover. I'm quite enjoying that. So this, I think, will be another soft cover journal. And for that, I'm going to be using fabrics. Now, for whatever reason, I seem to have been drawn to these monochrome fabrics. And I've got, in particular, one with a tree image on it. I've got um, some ones here with the French labels. I've got something to do with sewing. And I've got something to do with, I think, I think it's Japanese or China. It feels, it feels very um, Asian and it's, t you know, it feels, I don't know really what it is. So there we go. I've got that stack um, of fabrics and this one is linen. So I'm not sure where my French linen is taking me. But um, that is what I wanted. I, I couldn't, I don't know, I, I looked at all the colours and uh, just was these were the ones I was drawn to today. So I am just going to tear down the paper like that, putting that off to one side. This is a beautiful postcard from France. You really need to hold your ruler firmly and tear this down. So we're going to be binding this in with a very different method to how you normally might do things. You can use a sewing machine at any time, that's nice 
for anybody wanting to sew. And just tear down that final lot. Okay, so here, not going to be a waste, obviously that is another mini journal straight away. Right, so the idea is to tea stain them, but I might also like to have a few that are different. I'll do 10 in tea and then seven in something else. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that will hopefully be 10 and I shall do the two different dye baths on those and then we'll come back and see what we've got. Okay, I'm standing up to do this, so apologies if the audio is different. I've got two horrible rusty tins which I use only for dyeing paper and uh, they're absolutely wonderful because they do create the most amazing marks and effects on the paper which I absolutely approve of and uh, has certainly made it very interesting. I've got some really very very strong tea here that is a old solution I have kept from a while back. I have got some uh, vinegar in there to preserve it so it is a preserved dye, tea dye and it is black tea and very strong so I'm putting in my first sheet of paper into that mixture. I'm using gloves because I don't want to get brown nails. There's also bits here from the tea because I think a tea bag split. On the other side I'm going to be using a different dye. I'm just going to oop, I'm just going to get this one. Let's move that so they don't clatter. I'm just going to get this one underway. So once you've got it wet on there, the dye starts to come over. So that's that one. Oh, I know what this is. I think it's got spice in it. This is um, this is a tea and turmeric. It looks like there's spice in it. It's like that's why it's a funny colour. So if we're not, if we don't like it, we'll have to uh, try something else. But I don't like wasting the dye because it can obviously stain more things. So. I am using ATGSM navigator paper here. I don't usually have too much of a problem but sometimes when I'm wearing the gloves it's a little bit hard to, to pick up and therefore I can get a damaged edge. This I find is a really good alternative to coffee so it's a really strong black tea but it's also got some turmeric spice mixed into it and it does create a good brown colour. Okay, so just from that first pouring, we're creating quite a few dyed papers. So it is involved and it's not for everybody. And if you prefer to just sit and paint tea on it or coffee onto your papers at your desk, uh, that's absolutely fine. Whichever way you would like to age your papers, that's good. But I've got a feeling that this journal is going to take me into the past. So I want to have papers that make me feel that we're coming from that time. We're able to just get away from the white paper of the modern world and be taken and transported back to a different time. Not necessarily a better time, but uh, a different time. I'm not loving the little bits in this dye, which I think is the old spice mix. The turmeric. Mm. Can you see? It's, it's leaving a real deposit on there. So. It's, it's cool, but it's not actually what I want. So 
So I'm just tilting it to get the die to run down again and then we can slosh it over. Now I'm using this iron tin and the colour is changing because it's reacting with the iron in the tin. What I'm going to try and do is lift them all up and just turn it over. You can see that bottom one is, is already being affected by the iron. Okay, so that is that. Let's just move that one out the way and focus on this one. Now we're doing this one. I think this was onion. I think this was an onion dye, which means the papers come out green. So goodness knows what all this is. This is just this is dye that I've already used once and now I'm using it again so it's beyond junk. It's really scrappy. That's got bits in it as well. See, that could be spice. It could be bits of uh, rust. I can't remember. That's why it's important to label things. It smells all right. It just smells sweet. I was thinking it might have been avocado, but I don't think it is. Do you see where I smudged the other one on there and it's it has stained it. I like that. That's a nice idea, isn't it? In which case, maybe let's do that. The other thing I've got here, I have got turmeric, but I'm not going to use it. I've got some old coffee granules from some, you know, really horrible coffee that has been left to just fester on the shelf. Instant stuff. We don't use instant. We have... Um, you know, we have like a proper coffee, but I just want to have those coffee granules on there so that they can form some age spots on the paper, in theory. If I can get that off my glove. Ugh. Okay, now this all gets um, shaken off. It doesn't stay. All we're wanting is the stain. So the next one goes on and we just build up like that. Okay good, so we just leave that to soak in as much as it can. And just a couple of bits of, uh, of this coffee and put that on. So that is just on my fingers and I'm just making the marks because I've got it wet over here. And that's just old coffee, which will then ultimately get washed off so it won't come out quite so dark. I don't like coffee. I don't want coffee festering on my paper. I don't like the stale coffee smell, uh, which tends to go as the papers get old. But what I do want is the stain. And for that, these will come out much more subtle and that's great that's what we want I want non-smelly papers with interesting aged effects on them and I'm having a nice time just playing it's a bit like a child playing in a sandpit just experimenting and if that just you just feel you have not got time for this <laughs> Then, of course, you can print out um, digitals of coffee dyed papers and things like that, for which I will make available to you eventually on my Etsy shop, which I will set up. And if you're watching this in the future, everything I will be doing will be the treasured page. So you just need to look that up or look in the description be below. But at the time of filming, we're not quite there yet with any of that. So, bear with me. Great. Okay, the journal is underway. We have got our papers dyed. They were washed, so they were allowed to sit 
for a while to take on the dye. Then I washed them and then I baked them. So these are baked papers. Some of them are spice dyed baked papers. Some of them are undisclosed dye, which I can now confirm was beetroot. So we've got beetroot dye papers with coffee stain on it. That's the coffee stain one. That's how that came out when I was rubbing it around. And then we had tea and turmeric. And if you'd like to have a look at how I make the tea and turmeric, how I did that original dye, I do have a link to an original video below. It's one of my earlier ones. You'll have to bear with me. It was before I learned how to do editing. So there we go. You can have a look at that. Uh, the information is all there and it's all free. OK, so here we go. We've got the um, papers. Let's just do a quick flip through. So they're all different because they were in various uh placement within their pack when they were dyed they were some were in contact with the pan some were the second one up from the one that was in contact with the pan and where you can see these little spots that's where it touched the rusty iron of the pan where you can see this uh, sort of deposit here like old old paper that is from the spice there's nothing on it that isn't the spice it's all been washed away, but the dye from the spice has left those grainy effects on the paper. And the whole thing just gives a real aged effect. So that's the bit that was on the pan, so it's a lot darker. So they're all really cool. So there's not, there's, that's not grainy, that's just paper. It's all been washed away. Had I not washed it away, that's the effect. So this was one that didn't quite get washed away as brilliantly as it should have been. But I don't mind that. I've, I've wiped it off. And that's again been affected by the iron on the pan. So quick flip through now and then this... Uh, so the grey colour is where we've got it in contact with metal pans. And this was the effect of the coffee granules being put on. You can see I've washed it off so you're just left with this age spot effect of the granules from the instant coffee. And as you can see it produces a really really interesting effect. So this is how to age paper um, and, and get some really cool aged spots using old coffee. So nothing here bought, it's all just sort of planning and leaving and seeing what's in your cupboard. Even the turmeric was out of date turmeric, that something that we don't no longer use. Uh, so watch the video for the tea and turmeric spice and you'll see the spice dye and you'll see exactly how I made that um, in the beginning. And then all I did was I just poured the residual dye into a jar and that is this can be used again for really, really grungy papers. So some of, some of the lighter colour is beetroot, I believe. It, cut, it wasn't onion because it hasn't come out yellow. So there we go. Uh, well, this one was a bit of a casualty because it's got torn. But that is 17 sheets of paper for the purpose of this new journal. Uh, we're going to, well, we'll have to reduce that one so that doesn't matter. So we'll deal with that. Uh, what I'm going to do is pull in some other sheets of paper. Uh, ultimately, I want 24 pieces of dyed paper. So if you would like to journal along with me, we're going to be putting this all together at the weekend. So between now and Friday, if you want to get your papers together, you need to... Um, if you would like to do the exact same measurements, let me just tell you again, it is... 7 inches by 8 and a quarter inches for the sheets of paper that you need. You need 24 of them, but I've just got 17. One is ripped, so we're going to reduce that. That doesn't matter because this is a junk journal. We don't want everything uniform. So before you do 24 all identical, I've just done 17, one scruffy. So I've got 16 good ones and one scruffy one. Then I've got sheets of paper here. So I've got one... What do we say? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 
23. Oh, and then I've, I've got this amazing one. I love this. 24. So 24 sheets of paper. This one was a red cabbage and then I sprinkled rice on the top of it and just let it to dry and the rice sort of made a relief effect where it sucked up the dye and then made a mark on the paper so that is how to do that but it worked only with this dye I don't know why just didn't I tried it on others and it yeah I think it does it on tea and coffee you have to experiment it's all an experiment got a really cool edge there so what I thought, so I want to get them all the same size, but I, I also want to have some pockets and things, so I want to be able to fold. So I'm going to think like this through a little bit more and think, right, what I'm doing, just so that you know, if you've done this before, that's great. If you haven't, you'll just we'll journal along. I'm going to be hinging the two pieces of paper together with uh, another piece piece of paper which I'll show you in a minute so that's going to hinge together like that so your papers will there'll be no two the same so you won't have a repeat you won't go through the journal and go oh that's that same piece of paper again later on every sheet of paper is unique and different in this journal that's what I love about it so that's what we're doing so that is going to be your journal pages with a hinge and then we sew the hinge into the journal at the end so it will work out as you know it to sew them in but with a different way of doing it which is not different I mean the people have done it on YouTube it's it's not uh, it's not a unique idea uh, but what I want to do is so I can get the same size I think what 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 is quite nice is to also be able to have folded in bits and not cut them off so there's that so that just give the you know that's nice or maybe it should have gone the other way I Perhaps that would have been nicer. Doesn't matter, it's done now. It could be that that's the bit that gets hinged in, so I do get a shorter piece. I'm not sure. I've got I've got to make a decision later on about that. So let's think about this. Maybe just using this one as my guide, how I how big I want it. I can't go like that because the hinge is going to be all the way down there so it's it's going to be a question of bringing things in. Okay, so there's that. So I'm just going to cut these down. Right, good. So there we are. That's going to be part of it as well. Here are all my paste pa papers and that will be the journal. Those are all the papers. I might want to put in some other tissue paper style ones. Oh, we've still got this. That's it. See, that could be the bit that gets hidden in the hinge, so it doesn't matter. And that's a spare bit. So, you need 24 pieces of paper, all dyed and uh, interesting looking. They can be anything from magazine to book page to botanicals. They can be music paper, as long as it's sturdy and not too vintage that it's falling apart. Uh, you can use any kind of um, application, any ink process, anything, any tea, coffee staining, anything at all. Just you need your sheets of paper that feel right for you. And then what you will have is a nice stack of papers to work with over the weekend for how we put the journal together and in the meantime you need to have a quick look if you would like to make a fabric journal and do what I'm doing here I'm going to be looking at a my palette here is cream and black and grey and uh, those are the fabrics that I've chosen predominantly this will be the main one I think um, just thinking out loud obviously I might change things but I liked this because it had uh, some interesting bits on all of these are fat quarters you could go and buy some fat quarters and before you do that go to the shop and ask them if they've got any scrap 
fat quarters, any sale fat quarters, and, and look there first. Look in the bargain bin. Don't go and buy brand new. Brand new is too expensive. If that's what you're doing, this isn't the right task for you. You need to have a look at old clothing. You could even go to the charity shop and see if they've got something. Go there first. Going to a shop and buying new would be your last resort. I've only got this because I'm a quilter. at um, That's my original my my love but I have moved away from that temporarily just because I wanted to explore other things so I am left with all the fabric that you saw in in the racks and uh, that is my passion that those are my scraps um, only work with your scraps if you have no fabric if you have no time for fabric if you can't bear fabric use paper we're just going to be covering the book with paper or fabric so you don't have to have fabric but if you'd like to do this that's the palette I'm using but you do you you have exactly what you like I just liked that as a reference and I just thought that worked nicely. I think we're going to be bringing in botanicals. I think this might take us to the 1920s. I think that there's some possibility of visiting China and um, there's some element, there's some re something to do with sewing as well. I've got this feeling there. So that's all to come with my storytelling that will um, evolve and take this uh, journal to g give it the life of its own okay so that's where we're going with that and then on Wednesday we're going to make an ephemera holder as promised to one of the subscribers I'm going to make an ephemera holder which will help us to be organized when we do this journal so from Friday uh, we'll do the coffee pot challenge and I'll try and weave something into what we're doing here but certainly for Sunday and next Monday we will be uh, putting together this journal and just if you want to be ready for the challenge this is how I'm cutting out my strips for which will be the hinges so I'm just cutting down using a ruler one inch strips all right so if you've already got one inch strips from cutting down previous projects this is a good scrap buster um, so you just need those you're going to need 12 of those but I'm going to cut 14 just in case because I've already mucked up that one um, so just cut down the strips and make sure that you've got at least 12 good ones and uh, keep the whole lot together so I can't use that one because it's all torn so that's some for something else so we'll just go across here and do another one I think I'm cutting about four at a time here so that's quite useful let me just cut them there. they weren't so good so we'll keep those for something else. So I've got 14, that's fine. Just check that you haven't got any rips like that. Just go through them, make sure they're all okay. And then, uh, you know, bring in one that's a bit better. That's fine. That one's not fine. Right, 12 of your best ones. And then when you've got them, you can ahead of time now sit and fold these up in half. That will be your hinge that then will attach on either side of the paper. But don't do that step yet because we might want to do other things to our papers before we hinge them. But these are just good to have on hand. So you want 12 of these on hand. All right, so that's to do this week if you want to. If not, just follow along and then you can do it at your own time another time. I think we wanted that one. All right, so I'm going to keep the whole lot together. I've got this pouch that I was sent, so I'm going to keep them in there. Lovely. The journal prompts that I will be dipping into for August will be from the Crafty Planner Queen. Uh, she's posted up August Junk Journal Challenge on Etsy for Craft Plan Heal. Absolutely love that. So I think I will be dipping in. I won't be doing them every day, but I'll definitely be dipping into the ones that are relevant to this project. So we'll be looking at botanicals. We'll be looking at the 1920s. We'll be storytelling and reading letters and We'll be having the scene set uh, where we left off with Betty, but it will continue and take on a new uh, new route as we look um, at some other letters and some different possible historical ideas that 
we now find fascinating in our modern world. We're going to get lost in it to just be in our quiet crafting space. So if you'd like to make a similar journal along with me this month, you need to get your papers to the size I've set and uh, look out some fabric that you that you think is nice. I'm using a thick linen. I shall also be um, saying that the strip of fabric that we're going to need is going to be 11 inches by 19 inches. That will give you scraps which will be useful. So the, the top cover needs to be 11 inches by uh, let's say 20, 11 by 20. That'll give you a nice, nice scrap. So that will be your fabric and you're probably going to, if you follow along how I made the uh, journal for the Indian summer, it's a similar thing with, with a layered effect. So you're going to need your top fabric and also an interesting bottom fabric and you'll need some uh, scrap card, which could be anything from um, a cereal packaging to some some light card not too stiff uh, something that we can wrap around and make a nice soft cover with so look at all of those things have a look back at my previous video of how I made the Indian summer journal we'll be replicating that but with a twist of of hinging these pages together if you want to follow along I'm going to be putting this all in a separate playlist the playlist will be called French linen botanics and we're going to be putting all the videos in there surrounding this series and we'll talk more about it on Wednesday and we'll probably start putting things together starting Friday and then we'll do uh, the Sunday and the Monday next week as well to just really get the journal done over the weekend and then we can start things uh, next week. That's great. I hope you found fun and value here. Do like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my videos. And above everything else, guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now. <laughs>